Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've gotten a couple really good questions lately regarding water clarity and when and where you should be looking for the clearest water or the muddiest water and how you can determine where you need to be. And that's not a simple question. There's a lot of variables that go into choosing the appropriate water clarity that you should be fishing. Because believe it or not, most times, you know, depending on the lake and the time of year, there is a specific water clarity that will provide you with the best action overall. It may not necessarily have the most fish in the lake, but the actual uh, number of bites that you get will be better than other parts of the lake. So that's what I want to talk about today because I've gotten a lot of questions regarding this. And I think we're hearing a lot more about it recently with the resurgence or the emergence of forward-facing sonar. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with forward-facing sonar other than the fact that you hear a lot of people now talking about either looking for clear water or they're looking for uh, a little bit of an off-colored water, but still generally on the clear end. And that's simply because forward-facing sonar works uh, better. I shouldn't say the actual sonar works better, but your ability to get the fish that you see to bite generally works better in clear water because you allow a larger feeding window or an area for that fish to be able to see your bait. Meaning, if you see a fish out there in muddy water, you got to land right on top of them if you're going to give them the bite or see your bait versus for, you know, if you're using forward facing sonar in clear water, the point here is they might see your bait from 15 feet away and it really limits the negative outcome of a poor cast. It really allows you to have better opportunity. But that's not what we're talking about. We want to talk about how do you determine what is that best window or that area of water clarity that you're going to be looking for. Because uh, I've gotten a lot of questions recently from viewers who are uh, specifically stating that they want to generally look for off-colored water, but they're hearing people say that you should go look for clear water. So I want to kind of break down where and when you should be looking for all of this different uh, types of water, because it really does change throughout the course of the year. And it's a reason why uh, it's so important to use apps like the Deep Dive app, which shows you where you can find different water clarity on any lake that you're on, because it really can fluctuate from uh, upstream to downstream to creeks. It really can change all over the place. Today's video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app, which will help you select the best fishing places in the lake with features like the lake level, the current flow, the top baits tool, which will help you select the best baits for certain locations throughout the lake, whether that's a clear water, stained water, dirty water, it'll choose the best bait for that location, provide you with all the information like what structure, what retrieve, different reel, all of the information that you need to catch the fish. This is in the app. The cool part about this app though, is it's not just based on areas. It does provide you with specific tournament winning data that has been collected to help you figure out your best choices for baits and locations for whatever region of the lake it is that you want to fish. On top of that, not only does the app provide you with best locations, it gives you water clarity as well. So maybe you're on a lake like Lake You Follow, where there is a bunch of different water clarity located throughout the entire lake. This will help you identify the clearest portions as well as the dirtiest portions of the lake. Plus, the Deep Dive app has now added the wind effect map, which is going to take all of the different wind conditions for the past couple of days and show you what banks on the lake are being hit the hardest. They also have inflow points that show you different places throughout the lake where your water is being flushed into the lake through different ditches and creeks and rivers, providing you with high percentage places to fish and letting you know what parts of the lake are going to be the best areas after a rain. Check out the Deep Dive app to help you become a better angler. The first thing that I like to take into account anytime I'm thinking about water clarity is the time of year. Generally speaking, your dirtier water warms faster. So if I'm talking about cold water periods, uh, so a pre-spawn period, or I'm talking about the fall period where I get a nice warming trend coming in, I know that off-colored water is going to warm faster, which could potentially 
make the fish a little bit more active than say areas that are clear water. So I definitely want to know what I'm fishing because I kind of tend to go the opposite way during the middle part of the summer. If I've got a body of water that is very clear in one end and very muddy in another end, and it's 100 degrees out and it's straight sun, I tend to like to stay away from the, the really muddy stuff because that, that water is going to just increase dramatically in water temp. And I tend to think that you have uh, better action from fish that are in more stable water conditions. And your clear water is going to be a little bit more stable during the summer months. So it really does depend on the time of year that you're fishing, because in some instances you may want more off-colored water because it'll be warmer or warm faster, or there's times you may want that clear water, which is going to be a little bit more stable. So that's the first thing that I'm going to be looking for. The next thing that I want to keep in mind is the depth that the fish are going to be in. The dirtier the water, the shallower those fish are going to get. Not necessarily shallower in terms of the bank, but if you've got 40 feet of water, and you've got gin clear water conditions, those fish could be from zero to 40 feet. If you took that same area and you made it extremely dirty, chances are instead of being from zero to 40, they'll be zero to 20 or zero to 15. The majority of that population moves shallower or higher up in the water column as your uh, lake gets dirtier. And that simply has to do with the bait fish. You gotta keep in mind that the uh, bait fish, your shad population, a lot of your small minnow species that feed on plankton are feeding on plankton that moves with sun penetration. So that penetration uh, does not go as deep if you're talking about dirty water. And from that standpoint, the food source for the beginning of the food chain generally is shallower and the bass are gonna be shallower because of that. So you gotta keep in mind, uh, roughly that your your water column that the fish are in is going to shrink as the water gets dirtier. In some instances, you can use that very much to your advantage. In other instances, you may actually want the fish to be deeper because it sets them up on better cover. So what I mean by that is if you've got an area where you've got a really good offshore bite happening, maybe you've got a hump or a point that's got a beautiful boulder or rock pile or some irregular feature on the end of it, if it's in 20 feet of water and you're in muddy, muddy water, you may not have the fish going down to that point where they're going to use that. In clear water, you know the fish are going to use it. So you want to look at the uh, cover that you're fishing to and determine where you want to be. Uh, the same thing goes with your sun penetration or whether you're fishing during low light or uh, full sun conditions. In low light conditions, I generally prefer to fish in clear water because those clear water fish that are a little bit less active during full sun periods are more active during the low light time. So maybe you've got uh, a good weather front that's come through with cloud cover, or maybe you're just fishing in the morning or in the evening or the night, you know, when you've got, you don't have the sun that's out, those fish tend to bite better. At the same time, I tend to prefer to fish dirtier water generally in those sunny conditions because those fish are less affected by the sunlight because the sunlight's not penetrating as far. They're still going to be positioned the same way fish in clear water would, but generally those fish aren't going to pull out and move to deeper water like clear water fish would. Uh, so really what I'm talking about here, guys, is you've got to take all these different variables into account before you can say, hey, I should be in clear water or I should be in muddy water. And the reality of it is there generally is a zone that the fish are using the most, you know, and that's usually an area where it tends to mix a little bit, where you don't have gin clear conditions, but you also don't have muddy conditions. It's kind of an off colored water where I think the fish still can feed very well, but at the same time, it's not like they can see you from a mile away. So there's really a good, uh, a good common ground to find there with respect to your water clarity. It sounds a lot easier uh, said than done, because it really does change. And a lot of times you could find a, a pocket of water clarity that's perfect. You're getting a lot of bites and the wind's pushing in a certain direction. And that changes where you're fishing based, based on that water being pushed around and therefore the water clarity changes. So it's something that's constantly changing. But I assure you, there are ways to stay on top of this. And generally, when you figure out the water clarity that those fish are using, on that specific lake, it's almost like a pattern in itself. A lot of times you can run from creek arm to creek arm to creek arm, 
looking for that same position or that same water clarity where in one creek arm it might be closer to the main lake and another it might be further back but it seems like that's really your zone where the majority of your bites are going to come so just keep that in mind it's not about just finding clear water not about just finding muddy water it's about taking all these different variables into account and figuring out where I'm getting the most bites and then running the pattern based on that. Hopefully this answers the questions. I know I kind of jumped all over the place, but it truly is something that's important to helping you succeed on the water and catch more fish. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new video coming out tomorrow.